Okay, for this presentation, we're going to talk about reproduction. So basically, we're going to talk about the producing of offspring and the transferring of genetic information. So why don't you grab those uh, graphic organizers and we'll get this thing done. So the GSEs that we're going to talk about, and these are not the ones that you're to write on the front of your graphic organizer. Uh, these are the ones that were written by the state. So uh, we're going to look at reproduction as this process where new individuals are formed and those individuals receive genetic information from their parents or the parent in some cases. Uh, but the big one we're going to look at is looking at different forms of asexual reproduction and how the genetic information comes from only one parent. So a more kid-friendly version of that might be something simple like we're going to compare and contrast sexual and asexual reproduction. So that's the one you need on the front of your graphic organizer. So we should probably start with what reproduction is. And basically it's just the process where organisms uh, create offspring and they pass genetic information on to the offspring. Now there are a couple types of reproduction we'll talk about and the first type is sexual reproduction. Now in sexual reproduction we have two parents that produce an offspring and the offspring shares traits from both of those parents because the genes are what give that offspring the traits and that's something that we'll deal with in the next few presentations. And the other type of reproduction is called asexual reproduction and with asexual reproduction there's only one parent having the offspring so the offspring ends up genetically identical to the parent so in sexual reproduction generally in animals you have a female which produces an ovum and we think of that as the egg and the male produces a sperm so what happens is both of these combine that produce an offspring that have genetic material from each parent. Now with plants it's a similar situation. You've got male and female gametes they're called that come together. In the case of animals the female gamete is the ovum and the male gamete is the sperm and what happens with plants is every flowering plant has both male and female reproductive parts. So if we look at this diagram, you see the things that are, uh, the pistil is sort of the, the female reproductive organ for a flower, and uh, down at the bottom of the pistil you have the ovule, and that's where the egg is formed, and the uh, stamen, which consists of the anther, and the filament, which is the sort of the stem that holds up the anther, that produces the male gamete. Uh, we think of that as pollen. Now the cool thing about this is when a plant reproduces, what it does is it makes a fruit. And inside that fruit is the seed. So basically, if you're looking at that diagram where that ovule is, those are where the seeds form. And that little bulb there uh, becomes the fruit. Now this particular flower doesn't really make a tasty fruit, but uh, I'm sure if that were an apple blossom, it would be worth taking a chomp of. Now the important thing about sexual reproduction is that it produces uh, genetic diversity in a species, which allows species to change over long periods of time. Uh, and we'll talk again, that's another topic that we'll talk about in future presentations. So that's basically it for sexual reproduction. Now we can look at asexual reproduction. So this is where you have one parent producing offspring. And there are a few different kinds that we'll look at. So first we'll look at something called binary fission. In binary fission what happens is an organism will actually split into two separate organisms. So if we look at this diagram, we've got this little single-celled organism, and the little green squiggly thing in the middle represents the genetic material in that cell. And what happens is that cell uh, replicates or makes a copy of that genetic information uh, 
So eventually, that genetic material begins to move to the opposite sides of the cell, and the cell begins to pinch off in the middle there, and eventually it go, breaks into two separate organisms. So this happens mostly with uh, things like bacteria and protozoa. Another type of asexual reproduction is budding. So this happens with uh, a few different types of organisms, but what happens is the parent actually produces a new organism and that organism sort of grows out of the parent and then separates from the parent. A good example of that is a hydra. So here's a drawing of a hydra and that little bump that's coming out of the side of what looks like the stem, it's not a stem, but out of the side there is the beginning of the bud. And eventually that bud grows more and more and becomes an individual organism and it separates from the parent and now it begins to grow on its own. So again a hydra is a good example. Uh, the eyes of a potato, those are little potato buds. The third type that we'll talk about is called vegetative propagation. Sounds like a big word and it's not because it's two big words. What happens here is uh, this happens generally in plants and new individuals, new organisms will sort of arise or be produced without the use of a seed or a spore or something like that. So good examples are things like strawberry plants and ferns. So I don't know if you've ever seen a strawberry plant but here's a picture of one and what ends up happening is they produce these little shoots that come out these runners they're called and at the end of that you can see a new strawberry plant that's actually taking root in the soil there so it has produced a new strawberry plant ferns are a little bit different um, they have what's called a rhizome. Uh, you can see I've highlighted in green here. And you can sort of think of the rhizome, it's underground and it grows horizontal with the ground. Uh, don't think of it as a root though, it's more like a, a horizontal stem. So what happens is that rhizome grows uh, parallel with the ground and new uh, fern fronds grow up off of it. So you can see in these red circles here there are some new ferns being formed off of that rhizome. Uh, apparently my daughter ripped it out of the ground though, so it's not going to grow into a fern. It was all in the name of science though. So one good thing about vegetative propagation is it's very useful in agriculture. Uh, there's something called artificial vegetative propagation where you take a clipping of a plant and uh, you can do this at home. You can use, uh, you know, carrots, things like that. You take a clipping of that plant and put it in water or some other sort of growing medium, and you'll get a new plant. And that plant is going to be genetically identical to the one that you cut it from. Now, the good thing about that is, if you're in agriculture and let's say you're growing tomatoes, and you've got a plant that grows these really big, juicy tomatoes and grows a whole bunch of them on one plant you'd want all your plants to do that. So if you take a cutting from that tomato plant and you put it in the right conditions, uh, give it the right nutrients, sunlight and water, uh, you're going to get a whole bunch of tomatoes. Now the last type of asexual reproduction we'll talk about is regeneration. This isn't quite as common as the others. Uh, what ends up happening here is a damaged organism can actually regrow parts, uh, in some cases parts of itself, like a starfish could lose a uh, one of its uh, legs, for lack of a better word, and uh, it will regrow that leg, but that's not really reproduction, that's just regeneration. But there are some organisms that will actually uh, reproduce, can reproduce this way. Uh, something called a planaria. It's this little weird, uh, funny looking worm thing. Uh, if you cut one in half, it'll actually grow two brand new organisms out of that. So if you look at this diagram, you've got uh, that one in the middle that's been cut into three parts. And you can see the head uh, at the top ends up growing a tail. And the tail at the bottom ends up growing the head. And the center part ends up growing the head and the tail. That's a pretty good trick.
I'm kind of glad it doesn't work for humans though. So those are the types of reproduction. When we talked about sexual reproduction, we mentioned that sexual reproduction produces genetically diverse organisms. So they're slightly different from the parent organism. Now with asexual reproduction, it produces genetically identical uh, organisms to the parent. So there's no genetic variation in the species through reproduction. And there is, there are some ways that uh, genetic variations can occur in asexually reproducing organisms, but it's not through the reproduction, it's through uh, mutation. And we will talk about that again in yet a later presentation.